Hey everyone, welcome to today's closet check and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, it's a snowy day outside and we're actually about to head up to the mountains again for another trip. And so I thought I'd go through my current snowboarding setup. For a little bit of history, um, I've been snowboarding on and off for about 20 years I guess. Um, but that being said, I'm by no means an expert. Um, and at my current age, with how my body is now, I'm definitely not trying to do anything crazy out on the mountains. I'm definitely not going to be doing a full send in any regard whatsoever. But really, like my main goal when I go out is to just have fun and kind of like reconnect with something that I did while growing up. And it's because my main goal when I'm out on the mountain is really just to have fun. I'll leave all the crazy tricks and whatnot to, to other kids. All right, let's get right into it. And so this is my snowboard. Um, it's a ride profile uh, that's 156 centimeters long. And it's honestly a fairly old board. I think it's from around 2003. Um, I'm probably due for a replacement pretty soon. Uh, if you see that there's some nicks all around the, the nose and the tail, but you know, it's what I have and it's still, still riding pretty good. Uh, so it's a directional twin. So it's not a full true twin. Uh, the nose is a little bit longer than the tail is, and the, uh, the stance is set a little bit back, not too far. But um, otherwise, it is a fairly stiff uh, camber board, and you know it, it rides well. It's um, it's fairly stable. Um, but you know, I'm thinking that if and when I do get myself a new board, I'll probably go a little bit softer than this. Um, and I'll probably go for a true twin board, uh, not, not really for park purposes, but more just so that I can work on my switch riding and something that's a little bit softer so that I can work on butters as well. And so on the board, I have these Flow Fuse Fusion bindings from about 2018 or so. Uh, so I personally have been riding Flow bindings for quite some time. Uh, I always just found them to be, you know, somewhat easier to, to manage, you know, to get my boot in and just flip up the back instead of having to, you know, fully strap in and, and strap out every single time. Uh, and so, you know, I've, I've been happy with flow for, for quite a while. I know there's some opinions about uh, basically anything that's not your standard binding, but I will say that these bindings started off pretty good. Um, they were super secure and super easy to get in and out of. More recently, I have noticed though, uh, a couple of weird things about sort of getting in and out. I noticed that as I've been getting out of these bindings, the tops actually tighten down a little bit just with the way that there's a little hinge here and the way that it sort of works uh, for some reason makes it tighten a little bit. And because of that, it actually makes it a lot harder uh, than it should be to get my boot back in uh, after I get off of the lift. And so, you know, at this point, what I've gotten used to doing is um, when I get down to the bottom of a trail and about to load up on, on the lift, when I take out my, uh, my back foot, I also loosen the binding a little bit just so that, you know, when I get up to the top, it's a little bit easier to put in. And then I just tighten a little bit from there. So slightly defeats the purpose of the, the flow bindings, uh, just with, you know, those kinds of changes that have happened over the last couple of years with these. Um, but I think it is still a little bit easier than uh, regular standard bindings. But that being said, I'm probably figuring just with how these have been, uh, that if I am going to get new bindings, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get sort of your standard, you know, strap in, strap out uh, style binding and probably something from a, a company like Union, for example. And next on my setup are my boots. And so these are Rome SDS boots. I uh, don't remember the exact model name of these, but overall they have the, the BOA lacing system uh, that's on them here. And um, it's the, they have what they call their, their pro fit for them. And so, you know, these boots, I, I did what a lot of folks out there, a lot of videos that you'll hear about, you know, buying boots. Um, I, I took all that advice in that I went just directly to a shop and I just tried on a whole bunch of boots just to see what you know what fit the best um, and so you know in doing that I was less concerned about a particular brand name uh, less concerned about you know 
other things of that nature. I just knew that I wanted to have something that fit a lot better than my previous ones did because they really weren't that great. Uh, and so there's a lot of things that I really like about this particular boot. Uh, one is that this is the first boot that I had gotten that has the BOA system. And I know some folks uh, think that these are a little bit riskier, especially if they break, then you're kind of straight out of luck um, versus you know traditional laces. But I find the convenience of being able to just tighten by, by spinning the little BOA things here, uh, both on the side and on the tongue. Uh, to be just a much, much easier way to really dial in the fit. Uh, and so, you know, because it, it's one of the most important things to make sure that your boots are super snug and are super fitted to your foot. A couple other things about the boot is that actually on the inside for the toe, they are slightly padded, uh, which makes them super comfortable, uh, you know, especially when you're really jamming your foot in there uh, to get that solid fit. So it's really nice to have the little bit of padding that's on the inside for the toes. And then something else that, uh, that I did was, and this actually goes back to you know, that advice of actually going into a shop and getting help with picking out your boots in particular, is that these boots are a size nine. And you know, I typically wear a size 10 for almost all sneakers. And so obviously a size nine is, you know, by numbers is a little bit smaller than what I would usually wear. Uh, but to balance all of that out, what the guy at the shop helped me with was actually to get an insole, a replacement insole for this boot that is not only super comfortable, but was actually thinner than the, uh, than the, the insole that came with the boot. And so because of the thinner insole, insole and the way that it fits inside of here, it actually helped to sort of bridge that size gap, right? Because when I did try it on at first, it was probably a little bit too snug. Um, but with the, the insole that is now in here, I'd say it fits a little bit larger than a, a true size nine, which uh, works out for me. But I can still get you know, a really great fit using the BOA system on these. All right, and so now on to the outerwear uh, that I wear on the mountain. And so this is the main jacket that I wear. So this is the Supreme North Face uh, from Fall Winter 2017, I believe. And it's the mountain jacket uh, model from North Face, and it has sort of the all over uh, mountain print all over the front and all over the back as well. And so frankly, this was one of the last sort of quote hype pieces that I was able to actually buy manually from the Supreme website. Uh, it was the kind of thing that, you know, when I saw it, even with how loud it is and how kind of honestly silly it is to be wearing a snowy mountain when you're out on a snowy mountain, uh, it just, it still kind of spoke to me and said, well, if I was able to actually get this for retail from the site, then it would become my go-to snowboarding jacket, which is exactly what it has become. So that being said about this particular jacket, I mean, there's plenty of videos out there about this one and other uh, mountain jackets from the North Face as well. A couple of things about it that I do kind of wish were different um, that, you know, a true snow snowboarding jacket would have. Uh, the first is the fabric. And so the fabric is not North Face's highest quality, that's for sure. Uh, you know, comparing this to sort of their Gore-Tex jackets, um, you know, their, their new Future Light a fabric that they have and even some of the the older types of fabric that North Face has used. This is definitely not as it, it almost feels a little bit papery in terms of the overall texture of the jacket but you know it's it's still technically waterproof it's probably not as good as it would probably be if it was a true North um, a true Gore-Tex for example but you know it, it gets the job done from that regard. And then also, uh, because it's not a true snowboarding jacket, it doesn't have a powder skirt on the inside. And so, you know, those are some of the things that I do wish were a little bit different about this particular jacket, but it's been serving me, you know, pretty well over the last few years. Um, thankfully, I don't fall too much when I'm out on the mountain, and so the powder skirt isn't a big deal. Um, but, you know, I, I do love taking this out and you know, being out on the mountain. So while my jacket might not be Gore-Tex, I wanted to make sure that my bib was. And so this is the Supreme North Face bib from, I believe it's uh, Fall Winter 2018. Uh, and it has on the back the, the North Face Supreme hit on the back of the bib. 
And you know, fabric-wise, I'm just really happy with how this one came out because it has sort of the true Cordura ripstop fabric on the outside. It has the Gore-Tex layer in the middle, and it's otherwise cut to be much more of a true snowboarding bib. Um, you know, the, the fit of this is, is great, and the fact that it is a bib helps a lot uh, in terms of, you know, with my jacket not having the powder skirt, for example, so with it coming up higher, uh, it helps, you know, be able to protect from any snow getting inside. And also the, the way that the, the sort of ankle is done as well is much more snowboarding-like. Uh, you know, it has sort of the true uh, elastic liner that's on the inside that will fit super snugly around the boot. And then you have the outer layer that then sits over the boot to help keep out powder as well. All right, and now on to sort of the head and face wear. And so I basically went ahead and I, I went all in with Anon for my headwear. Um, I went with the helmet, the goggles, and the face mask to really sort of, um, you know, it, it makes really a, a complete unit. And the, the reason I decided to go with this was, you know, a little bit less just because I wanted to get everything but the exact same brand name per se. But historically, I've always tried to cover just about all of my skin when I'm out on the mountain. Uh, you know, just to kind of protect myself from the cold, from the wind, etc. And so I just figured the best way to do that is to make sure you get, you know, a helmet, uh, goggles, and masks that actually fit and are built for one another. You know, that way you don't get that annoying, you know, helmet and goggle gap in the middle there. And then especially for the mask as well. So for the, the helmet, this is, I, I, I don't remember the exact uh, name or model of this one, um, but it, it wasn't one of their like crazy top of the line ones. I knew I just wanted something that was relatively basic uh, from the line just for protection. And one thing that, you know, when I was starting to look into helmets that I was a little bit unsure about because there's a lot of discussion online, is how I wanted to uh, potentially wear a helmet either with or without a beanie and exactly how the goggles should work with it as well. Um, you know, if you look at most, I'd say, pro snowboarders, you'll see that they wear their beanie and goggles under their helmet and then just toss the helmet very pretty loosely on top. I wanted to keep my helmet to, to fit fairly snug um, on my head, you know, just for general protection purposes. And so I, I went ahead with the sizing for this without wearing a beanie under. And at first, I, I was a little bit nervous uh, about whether or not my head would uh, be warm enough without a beanie. But frankly, you know, with the, the way that these are padded and, um, and even the ventilation system that it has on the top, I've never actually felt too cold uh, wearing just a helmet without a beanie. And so I was pretty glad uh, to, to, to find that out because <laughs> otherwise I would have had to get a, a new helmet that was bigger to, to map for. A, uh, a beanie to go under. So again, uh, so that's the helmet. For the goggles, I have the M3 goggles from Anon. And one of the main things about this particular mo uh, model of the goggles that I uh, was interested in was the fact that it comes with you know two lenses for different conditions. You know, one for more overcast and one for sunnier conditions. And you know, the way that, that these lenses pop in and out really is super simple and super easy. I've had goggles in the past where, you know, it came with different lenses, but you had to like really struggle to get the lens out and almost feel like you're about to break the thing before you do. And so super easy uh, to switch those out, which I think is super important to make sure that you are wearing the right goggle for the, uh, for the weather and for uh, how, you know, how the sun is. And then with all of that, um, I have the Anon uh, face mask that goes with the goggles as well. So this is what uses their MFI system. It has a little metal bar that's in the, the nose piece here that sort of allows it to com you know, completely connect to the goggles. And then really, you know, it, it just helps to fully cover everything. And so with all these pieces on, it really helps to, again, minimize any of the gaps that might be left around if you're wearing, you know, a different mask with your goggles or different goggles than uh, that fit properly onto your helmet. And the, the other thing that having this kind of uh, technology that connects the, the goggles directly to the mask is it helps to also prevent some of the fogging that happens, uh, you know, with the, 
with the lenses. And so I have noticed that there is some fogging that does happen toward the top um, of my lenses sometimes, but again, overall, being able to just snap this in, just magnetizes in and it's super straightforward, great coverage. And last but not least are my gloves. And uh, you know, these are fairly simple and straightforward uh, Gore-Tex uh, gloves from Gordini. Uh, they are sort of this lobster knit type glove uh, that has the finger and thumb that can still move separately from the other fingers. Uh, again, nothing too fancy. Uh, I just wanted something that was properly waterproof, you know, to, to be able to handle things uh, well out on the slopes. If I were to get a new uh, mitt, I would probably get proper mittens. Uh, so actually on the inside here, even though for these three fingers, it looks like just one thing from the outside, it still is individual fingers on the inside, which at first, you know, when you slip it on, it feels nice because it, you know, it's a nice uh, fleece material on the inside. But you know, when it does get really cold outside, it's better for your fingers to be keeping themselves warm as opposed to being isolated from one another. So. Thankfully, um, I've been active enough, enough when I've been out on the mountain that I haven't gotten my hands be too cold, uh, but there have been times that I did wish I did have proper uh, mittens to account for that. And that about does it for my snowboarding gear. I'm excited to take this all out a few more times this season on the slopes, you know, get, get in some, some good runs out there. Um, hopefully this has been interesting for you to watch uh, here on my channel, and if you like what you've seen, Feel free to, to like and subscribe to the channel uh, from here and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.